Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we are going to be messing around with a Shambling Mound. The Shambling Mound is from Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. It's a good solid monster. It's a it's a great swamp swamp thing, swamp creature. It's a lot thicker in miniature than I imagined it to be. Uh, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and open the packaging, and then I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Now, you can take a look at this shambling mound. It's a pretty monstrous-looking little mound of shambling. No, it's just uh, like a tree branches and bark and wood. And I guess these might be little mushrooms up there. I'm not sure exactly what you got. Wood tentacles and stuff. A couple of arms. Uh, this actually has a couple of legs. And it's, a, and it's even got a mouth. It's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and it comes with, now if you play on a one inch grid, it comes with a two inch base. That's for a large creature, right? And this, so they consider this to be a large creature. What I need to do is apply some glue to the bottom of this. Let's smooth that out a little bit. Okay. Score it up a little bit and let's drop some DAP Rapid Fuse. This is pretty much the only glue I've been using for any modeling at all is the DAP Rapid Fuse ever since I discovered it last year. Okay, so let's go ahead and center it. Make sure it's good. Yep, it's good all the way around. Apply a little bit of pressure. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow this to dry for a minute or two. And as it's drawing, when it's done drawing, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime it with a fairly light green. This is, uh, this is called Army Green. It's a, it's a Rust-Oleum camouflage color. It comes out pretty light. Uh, I'm going to prime it this color, so it's going to be a very light green, and then I'm going to, and then we're going to bring that up with maybe some washes. Okay, so uh, let this dry, prime this. When this dries, we'll be right back. All right, now we got our shambling mound painted green. Here, let me get these out of the way here. We've got our shambling mound painted green. The military green, the army green, whatever it's called. Now we're going to use a military shader to make that green a darker green, but also to highlight the uh, different textures in the wood and things like that. But we're not going to leave it with that. When I'm done with that, I'm going to actually come back over at, with a mild brown. But we're only going to put the mild brown in splotches uh, to give it kind of a, I'm not going to say a camouflage, but more like a blended look because this mild brown 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 this mild brown will mix with the military shade in certain spots and it'll it has a pretty cool effect all right so let's go ahead and do the military shader uh it's a it's kind of an olive drab or a really dark green uh wash I put four drops in there but you might notice I'm going to use a thinner medium I'm going to put four drops of that in there there we go we're going to use a soft a very large soft bristle brush to kind of stir it And then we will coat this model with it. That's probably not enough. Four drops is not going to be enough to cover this model. Uh, I'm going to need about a maybe 20. One, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 drops. Plus the 4 I already did is 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just going to do ten drops of thinner in that second batch. Stir it up. I hold it by the base, that way I don't get it all over myself. And it's okay to get it on the base or the, uh, the stand because you're going to be doing, because it's green for one thing, which is earthy tones, but you're also going to be putting uh, texturing and things like that on the base. So don't worry about it. Anything you put on the base, you're going to be, anything that, spills over to the base you will be covering anyway wow it looks like maybe this is still not going to be enough this model has a lot of detail and what that does is you can kind of see how the uh, details cause the wash to kind of settle into those areas which is exactly why you use a wash but it also, because there's so much of it, it uses up the majority of the wash that I had mixed. Wow, I didn't anticipate this model needing this much wash. Okay, I didn't even get this whole left side. Now, once I get this entire model covered in my military shader green with a little bit of the thinner uh, medium mixed into it, um, once I get this model completely coated uh, and it dries, which will take about 20, 30 minutes because uh, washes have a tendency to take a longer time to dry than paint, in my experience. So, because it's water-based, I, I mean, it's most, it's, hmm. Lighter in the pigment. So, and uh, I don't want it to fully dry because I'm gonna be mixing in the brown with it, remember? I'm gonna, okay, let's cover that one piece that sticks up. Now, go over your entire model. Look over your entire model to make sure that you've covered everything in green. All right, now let's let this shambling mound dry for just a little while. I don't, I don't want it to be completely dry because when I go back over it with the mild brown, I want that to kind of blend in with the green. All right, give us a few minutes and I'll be right back. All right, now that uh, a lot of it has dried already, it's even sticking to my wax paper. 
I'm going to, but you can tell it's not dry yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit of this mild brown, and we're going to do a little bit of splotch work with that. Ten drops. No thinner. Just like that. In various places. Just randomized. The green's leaking down on my fingers. So now we got brown and green kind of mixed in, but we have to let it dry for the effect to really shine through. So give it another 30 minutes and we'll be right back. All right, guys, you can see my shambling mound. I've got I went ahead and primed it, and then I put that green military wash on it, and then I put a brown wash on there in splotches, and you can kind of see. I can play with it just like this, but I don't want my wood, because I see a lot of wood fiber and green leafy fiber and mossy fiber, and I think these are mushrooms on the top. I don't want to leave it just one kind of solid green like this. So what I'm going to use is... I'm going to use drab khaki, which is kind of like a brown color, uh, but it has like a very mustardy color. It's not as it's not as potent or as strong as like a German mustard color, but it is kind of a it does have kind of that feel to it. Now I'm going to use my ginormous gin, ginormous brush here uh, and. On any of these spiky parts that stick out, I want to really highlight those as uh, wooden or wood. Wood. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch my. Can't see it. I'm going to touch my brush into the paint, but then I'm going to roll my brush into the palette and get most of the paint off. Not all of it, just most of it. And this is called wet brushing, or, or it's not dry brushing, but it's, but it's not 100% covered either. So some areas of the underside will shine through. See how that, uh, maybe you can't see it, but the creases and the crevices of the wood, like there's a, what, what would you call it, like a, a fold in the wood or whatever, the, the dark wash actually still is inside there. And I'm not like forcing the paint onto the model. I'm kind of almost like I'm dry brushing. I'm just rubbing the brush across the areas, but uh, it's not a dry brush. It's kind of, it's still a little extra wet. If that makes sense I hope so so we get paint on the brush I wipe the majority of it off almost like a dry brush and then I just quickly go over some areas that I want to stand out like as as wooden knobs or wooden brambles or whatever you want to call it however you want to whatever the terminology is okay like like this finger here and you can see the you can see the line in the wood I don't want to cover that up
Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing a, a secondary darker wood green is just that, is to give it a little extra dimension. Is this hard? No, not at all. Will it really make a difference? Oh yeah, I think so. So far you're seeing like multiple tones on this. Now there's a couple of areas that I really want to do this uh, in detail. In his mouth, he's got these little teeth, right? I want to make sure I get those teeth as well. Okay. Any, whoops, his his knee looks like he's got a little wood protrusion sticking out. And I totally even forgot his whole left hand. Because it almost looks like a foot being where it is. Okay, now... If you see something that looks like it's a wood piece and not a vine, then hit on it. Yeah. If it looks like a vine, go ahead and just leave it a green. Because that kind of looks like a vine. But that looks wood right there, so... And there's no wrong way to do it. And I was wanting to make sure I did the mushroom heads. This is only going to be a base coat for these mushroom heads. I'm actually going to go with a deeper yellow on these guys. So what do you think so far? I think that looks pretty good so far. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks kind of disgusting that way, right? All right, so I'm going to let this color dry before we come back to another color. All right, guys, now, like I said, we're going to go with uh, like a flat yellow. Uh, now, this flat yellow, I'm basically going to be painting the mushroom heads. So I just put a very little bit of yellow in there. And now we're only doing the heads of the mushrooms. And I'm not looking for 100% coverage. Because I'm going to paint the tops of these mushrooms even in addition, one more additional color. Yeah, so just like that. I mean, it's not even... Now let's look around this model and see if there's anything else that I think would benefit from maybe a yellow. Like, do I see any mold? I kind of do right here. And 
And with the yellow, all I'm doing is highlighting these bumps that are on the bottom of the thing. Might not ever see that. But there are some bumps right there. Ooh, there's quite a bit of bumps right here. It almost looks like mold. And who doesn't like a little bit of yellow mold? A little bit more of that on his face. All right, so he's coming along. Uh, he's only got one or two more colors. Uh, when that yellow dries, we'll be right back. All right, now on the mushrooms and on the leaves. I want to put kind of a bright green. <clears throat> this is a German camouflage bright green. And I'm just going to put a, a very small drop. I probably could put it in here. We're going to start with my 10O brush because what I'm going to do is with that bright green that you can't see, but I just put a little bit of bright green right there because what I wanted to do was on these mushrooms, just give them a couple of dots as if they were like spotted polka dots. And these, not all of them, some of them, mainly the big ones. Give them like yellow heads with green polka dots. Kind of like that. Now what I'm also going to do is, having looked over this model in detail, there are areas that have leaves. And I wanted these leaves to be leaves to be a bright green so that they would really stand out and not be hidden amongst all the vines. Now in nature, all your leaves are not always green. Sometimes you get brown leaves or orange leaves, uh, depending on the climate or the weather or if the plant is dead or whatever. But in general, 
leaves are green. And so I wanted to make them green. So there. <laughs> Some leaves are tucked underneath. Okay, there's actually more leaves than I thought. Back is like covered with them. Okay. That's a big leaf. I might need more green. Yep. switching to a larger brush as well because there are more leaves. Whoever sculpted this model did a really good job. I mean, some areas look like it's kind of lazy because it's just vines. But then when you start looking deeper, you see all these leaves folded in, hidden behind the vines. I didn't really see this until I started painting it. So I'm having to look really careful at the model, make sure I'm hitting all the leaves. Yeah, like there's a big one right there.
right there. I think I got all the leaves. I'm double checking. Working on the arms, up and down the arms to see if there's any leaf looking pieces. Don't see any there. I think I've got all of the leaves. What about right there? Yep, that's good. That's good. Okay. Wow. There's a lot of these little leaf pieces. All right. Now, when that dries, we'll be back with the next step. All right. Now I'm going to use uh, some wood brown. It's kind of a really darker brown. It's a wood color. Uh, like a dark deep wood like mahogany or something like that and I'm going to sparingly very sparingly I'm going to paint some of these vines that look like they're maybe have some wood in them or Or something I just want to really contrast with the rest of the model. This long piece that goes down his arm right here. Because that khaki drab that I used for the wood, and then this color that I'm using for like a, a diff, it'll make it look like there's a couple of different types of wood in this shambling mound. So it'll kind of make it look like it's a mixed bag, which is exactly what I want it to look like. Okay, now we got this big strap it's got going across its chest. And I'm not covering it 100%. I'm kind of just getting a little bit of paint and then applying it to the majority of that piece, but I'm not giving it 100% coating. It, it comes back to that wet brushing again. can't wait to put this on the table in front of my players. Shambling mounds are pretty powerful actually, if you play them right. It'll give your party uh, a good a good scare. Not like an ancient red dragon, but still. 
you don't always want to have somebody fighting an ancient red dragon. It gets boring after the while if it's always the same kind of thing. Shameling mounds, I think, are an underused, nice creature. Maybe the inside of the arm. Yeah. It's almost like I used woodland camouflage on this thing. I think that's exactly how I like it. All right, there it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let all this dry. I'm going to dull coat it because I want it to be dull. And then I will do a close up and we'll take a close look at it. Uh, I'll see you when I get that done. All right, my dull coat has dried. Let's take a look at this shambling mound. Right, it's multicolored. Uh, you can take a close look and you can see the leaves, some wood grain, but also the the primer with the green wash and a brown wash. And then you can see the different colors like the khaki and the browns. 
teeth. It almost looks like it has eyes when it doesn't. It's got these little mushrooms, right? And it's got this long claw and I've painted the base. Uh, I'll probably go back and flock the base. But for right now, this is how it's gonna look on the table. Yeah, I like it. All right, guys, so thanks for coming out and checking out this video about the Shambling Mound, Nolzer's uh, miniatures, pre-primed uh, D&D models uh, that you can paint up yourself instead of having to buy the, the painted ones. Uh, looks good. And uh, if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And uh, if you want to help support the channel, be sure to donate using the PayPal me link in the description below. If you want to see different models or if you have any painting questions for me, go ahead and put them in the comments. I do, I do read all those. And uh, I'll catch you next time.